and I might spend more time covering it in the station. If you don't, then you'll have to figure it out on your own. OK, everything is clear. I'll tell Eric he's great. I think we're going to get started. Does everyone have handouts? Does anyone miss, is anyone missing handouts? OK. Uh, they're somewhere there. Please help yourself from the pile there. So I'm excited about today's recitation because if I do this right and you guys get it, then I can mess up every other recitation after it, and you'll still get the gist of 6006. So all I have to do is get this working. So most of the time in the real world, you're probably not going to be coming up with new algorithms to do something, but rather you'll have some code and you'll want to make it faster. And the first step in making it faster is you realize how does it do right now? How does it run? Which lines are slow? Which lines are fast? And where you can make improvements? So in lecture, we talked about the Python cost model, which is what you use to look at the code and figure out how much time it takes to run. And we talked about document distance, which is a problem that we'll use to practice our analysis skills. And this entire recitation is all about looking at versions of document distance and analyzing them. So that's what we'll do. Look at Python code, look at Python code, look at Python code. So you better have handouts because I can't project. Oh, sorry, these aren't handouts. They're spread, they're spread throughout the room. OK, how many people remember the document distance problem? You guys said you went to lecture, right? OK, so very, very fast, document distance. I have two documents. The fox is in a hat, in the hat. And the fox is outside. Document one, document two. What's the first thing I want to do? So there are three operations that Eric mentioned in lecture. Operation one. Take each document, break it up into words, right? This, was a, this is a string when I read it in. It becomes word one, word two, word three, word four, so on and so forth. Operation two, build document vectors out of the two documents. So the documents are D1 and D2. Uh, a document vector is basically a list of the words in the document with a count of how many times a each word appears in the document. So let's build a document vector for document one. Uh, I'm not going to write it formally. So can anyone tell me what it should look like? And I'll sort of write it down as a list. So for all the words here, I want to list the words and how many times they show up. Somebody, please. Well, I was in there twice. OK. The twice. Fox once. Fox one. Is once. Is one. Uh, it's like in one. In one. Not once. Awesome. Thank you very much. Second one. Another volunteer? Yes, go for it. Uh, once. The one. Fox once. Fox one. Is one side one. OK, so this is a document vector. Uh, notice two small details. Here, the is capitalized. Here, it's not. And yet, I bundled them together. I know my grammar, so I put periods at the end of the sentences, and yet they don't show up anywhere here. So we got rid of the punctuation, and we made all words lowercase. These are details, but they're details that you'll see in the code. So if you're wondering why, this is why. So step one, read the document, make it a list of words. Step two, compute the document vector. 
Step three, take the two document vectors and compute the angle. What's the angle of two document vectors? Big ugly math formula. The only thing that's relevant is that it takes these vectors and computes an inner product. So if we look at the code for uh, angle vector or vector angle, you'll see that it has number, numerator, denominator, lines two and three. It calls inner product three times, and then it does some math with it. We don't care about the math. We assume the math is order one. We only care about inner product. How does inner product work? Can anyone help me compute the inner product for these guys? Yes? It's like the dot product. Right? Okay. So you take the vectors and you multiply them, like you add each of their components, right? Yeah, they're so big. Um, okay, this is too complicated. I'm, I'm sort of sleep deprived, so give me simpler instructions, step by step. Um, well, I, guess you, I know you divide by the length of each of the vectors. Let's not worry about that. I, just, okay. I have these vectors and I want an inner product. I don't care about the angle, just the inner product. Okay, so I take the here, shows up twice. I take the here, shows up once. Two times one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then? Uh, then you do the same for Fox. Okay, Fox shows up here once, shows up here once, so what do I do? Uh, one times one. Okay. And do the same for is. Okay. And in, which would be zero. Okay. Another in. Okay. And then outside would also be zero, and hat would also be zero. OK. So it turns out you don't have to go through both lists. It's sufficient to go through one of the vectors and look up the words in the other vector. Mm -hmm. Because if the words don't show up in any of the vectors, their contribution is going to be zero. So my algorithm is going to be go through each of the elements here, look up each of the words there, look up at the word here. And if there's a word here and here, Take up the number of times it shows up in each document, multiply them, and then add everything up. So this is inner product. Everything else is good if you're writing a search engine or if you're using this in a real application, but we're not really concerned with it. OK, so now we have the three steps. Read the document, break it up into words, compute document vectors, compute their inner product. So this is what we want to do. And document distance one does it in a painfully slow way. And we're probably not going to cover everything in recitation, but if you go all the way up to document distance one, that's really, really fast. It's a thousand times faster. So this is our job for the day. Let's look at the code. Did anyone look at the code beforehand? Nope. Okay, so when I look at a big piece of code, I like to look at it from, uh, top, to, from uh, top down. So that means I start with the main function, I see who's it calling, I see what everything is trying to do, and then I go into the sub-functions and recurse and basically do the same thing. So I build a tree of who's calling what, and that helps me figure out what's going on. So let's start with main. And let's look at main. Lines one through six, look at the arguments, we don't really care. Lines seven and eight call word frequencies for file. For file, and I'm abbreviating liberally. And then line, where am I? Line nine calls vector angle. So line six and, sorry, seven and eight read the two documents, do steps one and two, and then line nine does step three. OK, word frequencies for files. So the point of this is to read a file and to produce a word a document vector out of it. And it does it in uh, three steps. Reads the file, line two, gets the, breaks up the file into words. So operation one, this is line three. And then line four, it takes up the list of words and computes a document vector out of it. I don't care about reading files because I'll assume this is somehow done for me. We care about the algorithms. So as far as I'm concerned, this function is calling get words from line list. Get words 
from line list and count frequency. And if we skip all the way to vector angle, we already talked a little bit about how all it does is it calls inner product three times, and then it does some fancy math on it. So this is how the code looks like big picture. OK, so to figure out the running time for main, we need to figure out the running time for these two functions and add them up, right? To figure out the running time for this, we need to figure out the running time for these functions and add them up, so on and so forth. So as you go through each of the document distance versions, you want to keep a scorecard of the implementation that uh, shows you what the running time is. And this helps you follow uh, what was improved in each implementation. So let's look at get words from line list. What does it seem like it's doing? Without reading the get words from string, can anyone tell me what it seems like it's doing? If you just read lines one through six. It's recursing through the list. OK, so it's getting an input list. And if you look at word frequencies for file at line two, it's, it names a variable line list. So it seems like what's happening is read file, reads a file into a list of lines. And then that list of lines goes to get words from line list. So this is. Uh, this is L in get words from line list. So it takes, it takes a list of lines, which is the entire document, and then? Basically, it removes the new lines. It sticks into one giant list rather than um, a list of lines. Is that right? Almost. So you see the get words from string? Maybe we need to go through the function. But do you see the get words from string function name? So I would assume that it does something with each of the words. And if the overall goal is to get a list of words, then I would assume that what that does is it takes a line and it breaks it up into words. Because this way, if we take up each line and break it up into words, then when we put all the words together, we get the words that make up the document. Do people follow? Any questions? I like that people are nodding, by the way. Keep doing that. That <laughs> helps me go at the right speed. If you're not nodding, I'll keep explaining the same thing over and over again. OK, so get words from string. Get words from string takes up a single line, that's a string, and produces a list of words. And we saw in the example there that it has to take care of a few details, such as making all the letters lowercase and ignoring punctuation and skipping spaces. So let's look at this code and figure out its running time. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at each line, and we're going to see what's the cost for that line, and how many times does it run. And once we have those two numbers, we multiply them together, and we see how much time does the program spend on that line in total. So I'm going to write down line numbers here. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 all the way to 23. Too low. 21, oh, 20. 20, 21, 22, 23. OK, so let's start with something easy, lines 9 and 10. Uh, how many times are they run? Once. OK. Uh, L, uh, once in this method. Yep. So I'm, I'm only looking at this method. So assuming, assuming that the method gets one line, and the line has, uh, I don't know, say, uh, one line and characters. And we need another variable, which we're going to figure out later. But for now, one line and characters. So 
So how many times does line, line 9 run? OK. Runs once. How about line 10? OK. What do they do? Create new lists and assign them to variables. What's the cost for that? Excellent. So I'll be skipping the order of so that I don't have to write it 23 times. So one, one. OK. Uh, line 11. It iterates over all the characters in a line. So how many times is it going to run? OK, which is? Awesome. And just the fact of iterating takes constant time. I'm not sure we covered that. So for each character, uh, it tests if it's an alphanumeric character. Does anyone know what alphanumeric means? OK, so fancy word for letter or number, A through Z, 0 through 9. So how much time does it take to test if a character is alphanumeric? Guesses? OK. So constant time. You compare it to the range AZ is 0, 9. How many times am I doing it? Thank you, guys. This is going much faster than the last recitation. You guys are active. I like it. So now for line 13. That only gets executed when the character is an alphanumeric character. So we're going to have to make some assumptions about the document. And to make my life easier, we're going to make the following assumption. If this is a natural language, like say English, words are going to be a constant size, right? How many 500 character words did you see in English? So let's say 5 to 10 characters per word. And since the difference is so small, I'm going to say all the words have the same size, w. And if you want to be more formal, you can replace word length with average length, and the math works out. So each line has a number of words, and the words are separated by exactly one space, and the word has w characters. So how many words do I have, by the way? OK, good. Someone's paying close attention. n divided by w plus 1. And the reason that is is a line would look like this. Word, space, word, space, word, space. So w characters, one space, w characters, one space, w characters, one space. That's why you have w plus 1 there. When we look at asymptotics, it turns out that it doesn't really matter because w is a constant, w plus 1 is a constant, so order n words. But for now, let's keep track of w's to seem a bit more formal. So line 13, how many times is it going to run? Excellent. Let me pull the N out. Um, how much time does it take to run it once? Constant. constant time. Append covered in lecture, constant time. So this is a bit tricky because uh, if you have an array implementation that's naive, it's not constant time. But Python does some magic called table doubling, which we'll cover later in the course. And this is why you can say that append takes constant time. OK, else, so if the character is not alphanumeric, then what's going on here? Can anyone see what's happening there? OK, so let's say if it's a space. Yeah, this is the harder part. I, I think you need to run this on an example to figure out what's going on. I can't. Uh, I had to run it on an example in my head. So let's take this small example here. The fox is outside. And this is a single line, right? Nice and handy. So this can be the input for get words from string. And let's see what happens. So first, I start with word list, which is empty list, character list. Empty list. Take the first character. It's alphanumeric. Gets appended here. 
Second character, alphanumeric, appended here. Third character, alphanumeric, gets appended here. Fourth character, not alphanumeric. So I get to run, to run lines 15 through 18. OK, I did the easy part. Someone walk me through the hard part. What happens in lines 15 through 18? Yes? So, uh, first, it, it uh, takes that list and joins it into a string. OK, so this is a list of characters. And join takes the list and makes a string out of it. So I'll have the string the. OK. Excellent. And it converts it all to lowercase. OK. Uh, and it appends it to the word list. The word list is up here, right? So this is going to have the. Uh, and then it clears the character list. Set an extra. OK. So now as I go through the next word, I have f o x. Then this becomes a word, and it gets added here. So on, so forth for everything. Do people see how this method works now? I'm, I'm not getting that many nods. So questions? If I don't get nods, I'll stop, and you guys have to ask what you're confused about. I think it was just a little tricky because it said, instead of saying if it's not an alphanumeric character, it's just like, well, if it's greater than, if the list of, length of the list is greater than zero, which threw me off initially, but then I realized it was just like omission. OK, so why does it do this? What's the point of the length of the character list? So that there are like two spaces. Excellent. So here I was nice, and I had one space, one space, one space. But if I'm sloppy when I'm typing and I have two spaces here, then suppose this is space, space, kind of small, but pretend. Go with me here. So we got here, we got the fox is. And then this list is empty, because line 18 just made it empty. If I run the code in lines 15 through 18, it's going to add an empty word up here. And empty words aren't very useful. They'd, you'll, you'll see how many times uh, documents have too many spaces in them. So that doesn't really help. I mean, isn't that not an issue? Because you call if c is lnum before you actually get to that. So you would just you'd run through it again, but you would still just skip over the, um, and it would, that. And that would fail, and it would just. So, not do that so first space, C is L non fails. I run lines 15 through 18, yep. right? I have is here. This becomes empty. Yep. Second space, C is L non fails again. Yep. And if I wouldn't have the length check, it would run lines 15 through 18 again. Oh, OK. OK, sure. okay so this is what it's trying to prevent. So you can see that this code looks complicated, right? It's trying to do a lot of things. It's complicated. It's hard to, hard to analyze. Oh well, let's go with it. Let's try to finish it up quickly. So now that we know what it does, let's try to figure out how many times each line runs and what's the cost. Yes? So um, I think the total cost is n times 1 minus w over w. Wait, so here? Yeah. OK, so you're saying n times 1 minus. OK, why, why do you say that? Um, I like it, but why? Oh, OK, it's because it's everything that is in the character. And the line above it was characters. OK. So, or alphanumeric. So, so basically spaces, spaces, right? If we have word space, word space, word space, this happens for all the spaces. Cool. So this is good. I'm going to make it a bit simpler. Same thing. It's just that it's slightly less intimidating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Very brave. Come up first. Um, what's the running time for line 14? So cost for running it once. Cost. Excellent. 
I like you guys. Nice. Line 15. How much time does it take to take characters and put them into a list? Uh, n where n is the size of the list, right? OK, so what's the size of the list now? OK, so when you're using more than one letter, the problem is you have to be, pay attention to which one you're using. Because when we teach algorithms, we say, oh, this is n, this is n squared, so on and so forth. You have to replace it to the right letter. And I get confused about this all the time, so it's serious what problem. Are the two what are the two columns? So this is the cost of running a line once, yeah. and this is how many times it's run. Oh, okay. Thanks for the question. I should have said that in the beginning. Thank you. OK, let's make this a little bit faster. And notice that lines 15 through 18 all run the same number of times, right? They're in the if. And there's nothing else that uh, changes the control flow there. So lines 15 through 18 are all n divided by w plus 1. All right, line 16. Take a word, so take a string, and make another string where each character is the lowercase version. OK, cool. Why W, intuitively? Because it wants to go through and check to make sure there is no error. It's not like lower. Yep. Yeah, so if you have a 10,000 character string, you have to go through 10,000 characters. Very good. Uh, append, line 17. Sweet. And line 18, reset the character list to a blank list. OK, how many times do, Ryan, do lines 19 through 23 run? Once. At most once. Can anyone figure out what's the point of them? Catch me trailing. Good. If you, if you ended on the last letter of a word, you want to make sure you catch that word. All right. Very good. So if I end it here, then after I'm done with the loop at line 19, what I would have is word list would have the fox is, and then the character list would have the characters for outside. If I return the word list, whoops, I just missed the word. So lines 19 through 23 are pretty much a copy. Sorry, lines 20 through 22 are a copy of lines 15 through 17, and they take care of the last word. So line 19 is an if, and it takes the length of a list and compares it with a number. What's the cost of that? OK, very good. Checking a list length in Python is constant time. Did that in lecture. How about lines 20 through 22? I just gave it away, guys. Come on. Someone. It's the same as 15 through 17. OK, same as 15 through 17. WW1. Line 23, return constant time. OK, so now we're going to, we know how much it takes to run a line once, how many times each uh, line runs. So we're going to do a dot product of these guys. See, dot products are useful, after all. And if we do a dot product of these guys, we're going to get the total running time for the function. So let's compute the partial terms. Uh, I'm not going to write them down. Let's just go through them and figure out what they are. So you guys. Say them. One, one, n, 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 weird equation. <laughs> OK, weird equation, but what's the important part? Yeah. What, sir? Yeah, the important part. The important part is n, right? This yeah. is some constant times n, so n. Pay attention. One. Pay attention. <laughs> It's not n, it's not 1. OK, actually, it is 1, I guess, if you think yeah. that w is a constant. Sorry. Testing us. OK. One. One. So I heard two numbers, n and 1, right? So this is O of n plus 1, which is order n. Because as n goes to infinity, 1 becomes really tiny. OK, so this is how you analyze a function. Big functions are horribly painful to analyze because you have to look at each line and do this kind of reasoning. 
And it's not even on top level function here, so I don't even get to write anything here yet. So get words from string takes order n time, where n is the length of a line. Let's look at get words from line list. Yes. Does it matter? So that I can reason uh, for lines 15 and 16, mm -hmm. I can reason through them easily if I have a constant length. It turns out that if you have an average length, the results are going to be the same. Like overall, if you look at the uh, if you look at the running time as a sum of what's the running time for appending, uh, sorry, what's the running time for converting all the words to lowercase and then appending them to the list? The sum of those is still going to be n. But that takes a bit more time to reason through, so I took a shortcut. Are you a math major, by the way? You're very rigorous. OK. So this is good. It's, a, it's at least good to try to keep this in the back of your head to make sure you don't fall, a trap. Don't fall for a trap. So get words from string order n. And we're trying to figure out get words from line list. Any more questions before I do that? Or does anyone want to tell me I'm wrong? OK, good. So get words from line list. Lines 2 through 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Line 2. OK, cost 1. How many times does it run? Line three, we need a new number, right? We need a number of lines in a document. Let's say we have Z lines. So line three runs Z times. And four and five are in a loop, so they also run Z times. What's the cost for line four? Excellent. Oh, what's the cost for line three? One. And what is the cost for line five? It looks constant. Looks constant. OK. Does anyone think it looks, anyone else think it looks constant? Yeah. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. The length of the two lists. OK. Good. You paid attention in lecture, right? I tried. Nice. OK, so we have plus as an operator. And suppose we work with two lists. The first list is 1, 2, 3, all the way through 1,000. And the second list is 1, 2, 3. So when you call plus to combine them, if you say something like c equals a plus b, you would expect that if this is a, by the way, and this is b, you would expect that after you call this, a is still this, b is still this, and c is a list that contains everything. So because of that, plus, what plus has to do is make a new list. Append all the elements here, append all the elements here. So the cost of this, if this list is 1,000 and this list is 3, is 1,003. Or if you have two lists of length L1 and L2, the cost is order of L1 plus L2. Now there's another Python method called extend, which does what I think you would expect plus to do in terms of efficiency. So what extend does is you call it on one array, uh, on one list, give it the other list, and it's going to take each element in the second list and append it to the first list. So for each element here, it calls append on this list. So what's the running time for extend? OK, too many directions and length of the second list. Excellent. So two lists, L1, L2, order of L2. So it doesn't matter if this is a 1,000 elements or a million elements. Appending three elements is going to take time proportional to three. OK, now let's see what's going on here. 
So we have z lines, n characters in a line. Uh, I think I want a nicer constant. I think I want, um, no, let's go with this for now. So is, this is the length of a word. Uh, let's see, how many words would I have in a line? Let's say I have k words in a line, which is n divided by w. So I know that uh, get words from string returns a list of size k. So if that is the case, then the first time line 5 runs, word list is empty. And it's going to get k elements. The second time it runs, word list has k elements, it gets k more. Third time, it has 2k elements, it gets k more. So the running time for this looks like this. k plus 2k plus 3k plus 4k, all the way until when I'm at the last line, if I have z lines, I had z minus 1 times k elements in the list, because I have z minus 1 lines and I put all the words in the list. And I'm adding. Uh, k more words. So total z times k running time. So this is the total running time for this guy. And this is not constant, so it's complicated. What does this sum come down to asymptotically? Z plus 1k times, sorry, zk over 2. So because I care about asymptotics, this is order of z squared times k, right? So now an even more natural number to work with would be the number of words in a document. And the number of words in a document is um, w, which is z times k. So z is w divided by k. And if I substitute this, I get that this is equal to O of W squared over k. Now in reasonable documents that I see, uh, there tends to be a limited number of words per line because they have, the document has to fit on a page. So k is pretty much a constant. So this comes down to order of w squared. So if I go down here and look at get word from a line list, this is w squared, where w is how many words I have in a document. Uh, how many of you guys are still with me? Half. OK. Uh, does anyone else want to ask questions so that we can get back on track? Yes, no? OK, thank you. So let's see what's going on lines 2 through 5. So I have word list, which at the beginning is empty. Then in line 4, words in line gets k words. And those k words in line 5 are added to word list. So after that, word list has k words. Then I run through the loop again. Get words from string gives me k new words. They get added to the list, which now has 2k words. Next time I get k more words, they get added to the list, which has 3k. So on and so forth, until the end I have ugly numbers. z minus 1 times k words, and I add the last k words. And I get z times k words. So the word list is eventually going to have z times k words. And it gets them k at a time. The thing that does this addition is the plus operator. And the running time for the plus operator is the size of the two lists. So it's this plus this. 
So that's why the running time is first k, then 2k, then 3k, then Make sense now? Yeah. OK. So this is a subtle bug, because if you change uh, plus to extend, you get dogdist2, which runs a lot faster. OK. Um, so for everything else, we want to be able to do this sort of analysis, but we want to do it faster. So you guys should look through dogdist1 through 8 and do the same analysis for all the functions. And we're going to post lecture notes, uh, sorry, recitation notes, where we tell you this is the function that changed and this is the total running time. And you should go through the lines and convince yourself that this is the right running time. And you should do that until it becomes second nature. Because when you're writing Python code, you want to have this in your head. You don't want to have to write it down. Because if you have to write it down, you're going to be lazy and you're not going to do it and you're going to use plus instead of extend, and your code is going to be horribly slow. So practice until this gets in your head, and then you'll be able to see the running time for things really quickly. OK, do we have time for one small exercise? Let me see. OK. Let's look at the running time for inner product, because this is nice and easy. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7. 2 is 1, 1. Right, nice and easy. Uh, 3 looks at the first document list and iterates through it. Iteration is constant time, but if the first document vector has L1 elements, it's going to run L1 times. How about line 4? Word 2 count 2 in L2. This is iteration again. So it's constant time to run it once, but how many times will it run? L2 times L1. L2 times L1. Excellent. So these two loops are nested inside each other. So that means that lines 4 through 6 are going to run once every time line 3 iterates. So sorry, actually line 4 is going to run once every time uh, line 3 iterates. And then everything inside uh, the second 4 is going to run L1 times L2 times. So lines 5 and 6 are also going to run L1, L2 times L1, L2, L1, L2. How much time does it take to do that if check there? Why does it take a constant time? OK, good. So we have two words, and equal equals tells me, are the words equal or not? right? So the way you do that is you have words like the and fox. You go through each character, and you stop whenever you see char different characters. But if you have uh, something like, if you have a fake word, foi and fox, then go through the first character, they're equal. Second character, they're equal. Third character, they're different. So if you have length w words that are different only in the last character, this is going to be order w, right? So the real, yep, equals equals for string is not, strings is not constant. It takes w time, where w is the length of a word. Now here we said that the length of a word is constant because we're dealing with English, so you could tell me it's constant because of that. But I would like to hear the argument before I take it. How about line 6? Almost. It's a trap again. It's a trap yeah. Yep. Yeah, so this time they're not lists. So if you look at uh, what's going on inside there, you have count one and count two are these numbers in the document vector. So they're numbers. And then sum starts out at zero, and then it keeps getting numbers. So sum is going to be a number. 
And multiplying numbers is constant time, adding numbers is constant time. So plus for numbers is order one indeed. But you're reassigning some every time. Which is also constant. Because you're copying a number over. So as long as you're copying one element over, that's constant time. If you're adding two elements together, two elements, not two lists, that's constant time. So this is constant. And the last line is return. So what's the running time for this? Excellent. So I assume this is a constant. So this lets me say this is 1. And then if we do the partial product, we get 1, L1, L1, and L2, L1, L2, L1, L2. And if you add them up, you get L1 and L2. So this is going to be L1, L2. Vector angle calls inner product three times, right? So what's its running time? Excellent. Count frequency. Uh, you're going to have to take my word for it that this is order of w squared. And if that's the case, what's the running time for word frequency for file? W squared. Cool. So what's the running time for main now? Last trick. Yep, you just add them up, except there is one last trick there. Constant. No. W is constant, right? No. So W is the number of words in a document. Oh. So it's huge. Yeah. If that's constant, then the whole problem should run in order one time, and we're done. We're going home. OK. So. You're going, you're going faster than me. You're, you're, going to, you're going too fast, but you're, you're right. So word frequency for file is called twice. The first document is going to have w1 words. The second document is going to have w2 words. So you can just copy w because this is called twice for different files. So this is order of w1 squared plus w2 squared, different documents. And then I have plus um, L1, L2. And you said that W1 and W2 dominate L1 and L2, right? Because W is the total number of words in a document, whereas L is the number of unique words, because it's the length of the vector. So that is true, but I am not sure how to reduce this here to make use of that. However, I made use of what you said already when I wrote this. Can you see why? Can anyone else see why? So let's look at uh, let's look at the vector angle again. Lines two and three. So line two, uh, it calls inner product with L one and L two. But if you look at line 3, it calls inner product with L1, L1, and then L2, L2. So the total running time for vector angle is actually L1, L2 plus L1 squared plus L2 squared. So if the first document has 1,000 words and the second document has one word, Computing the inner product between L1 and L1 is going to take a lot more time than computing the inner product between L1 and L2. So I can't leave out these terms. They have to be here. However, when I add them up here, if I would write W1 squared plus W2 squared plus L1 squared plus L2 squared plus this, in that case, I can use the fact that W1 is bigger than L1, and it cancels it out. Does this make sense? Did I lose people? Ask questions, please. So, if you can't get rid of L1 and L2 in the, in the top. You can't. Oh, you can't. So I can't get rid of this can't term. Get rid of those, right? So the right way, 
So this should be the sum of this and this, right? right. So it should be w1 squared plus w2 squared plus l1 squared plus l2 squared plus l1, l2. L1 is strictly smaller than w1. Yeah. Goes away. L2 smaller than w2 goes away. And I get this. Right. So l1, l2 isn't smaller than w1 squared. Is it? If you know more math than me, you might be able to prove that it is. Okay. But I don't, so okay. I'm just so leaving it in there. Okay. Yeah. I think there is some relation, but I really don't remember what it is. So let's leave it like that for now. Intuitive. Yeah, I think it should be the case that these are bigger than this, but I'm not sure. OK, yes? How do you get the line for vector angle? How do I get the running time for it? So vector angle calls, vector angle gets two vectors, right? The vector for document one, the vector for document two. The length of the first vector is L1. The length of the second vector is L2. Now, line, where is it? Line, uh, line 2 for numerator calls inner product with L1 and L2. So we know that the running time is L1, L2 up here. Now the next line, line 3 in vector angle, calls inner product with L1 and L1. So the running time is L1 times L1, which is L1 squared. OK. Can we say that because there's a bounded number of words in the English language, L1 is bounded, and as the length of the document gets really, really big, that term becomes constant? Uh, yeah, you might be able to do that. <laughs> yes, I think for the cases that we give you, that is true. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's cool. It yep. doesn't work if it's, not in English, if it's not in a language, right? If you just have gibberish? Yes. Uh, also, constant. So. Constant is use, uh, to say that it's constant is useful when the number of words in English is much smaller than your input size. So if, say, English has 50,000 words and your input is 3,000 words, then the input is much smaller. But if your input is a million words, which I think is what we use, then, yeah, it comes down to constant. So yeah, that's a good insight. That's really nice. Anything else? OK, so you get to go through document distance through to 8. We'll tell you what changed. And we'll give you hints to uh, help you analyze it. But you have to analyze it and update the scorecard for each algorithm to see how things improve. Thanks.